Ikea parking Woo! lot. Ross is getting dressed. We're getting ready oh, to yeah. go to Hamburg. It's pretty empty, early in the morning. We're all getting ready. Our car looks awesome and not smelly right now. Uh, we've got some dirty shoes in the back, about to dry. Wet towels, and that's it. Our night was awesome. It was 50 degrees. We almost froze to death. <laughs> and I don't know, I just couldn't be happier to be warm up in the morning. Yeah. But the sun is out and it's supposed to be a beautiful day today. So I took over Brad's uh, video update for the time being and he probably is he's probably gonna stab me tonight and there comes our bus so we should probably sprint to the bus stop <laughs> uh, I'll see you guys we are here at the central station in Hamburg and to our right uh, the majestic Bieber house where uh, Justin Bieber claims residence for about three weeks in the year when he comes to greet the believers in Hamburg Very nice. Very nice. How much? <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Hello. We're downtown now in Hamburg. Hello. We're Hello. walking around, checking things out. We just went inside the uh, miniature Wonderland, which I know at least my parents have shown them that before. Um, the wait time was over an hour though, so we decided not to do it. But there's a great YouTube video that shows everything that happens. Maybe we'll put the link in the description or whatever. People can check that out. Probably not. Um, how's everyone doing? How's everyone like at Hamburg so far, Lars? I like it. Um, it's very uh, modern, but a lot of cool buildings. How about you, Ross? Yeah, it's pretty sweet. I'm enjoying it so far. It's pretty good. It's very different than the other cities. And a little, it's like a Copenhagen, but bigger, more spread out, and less bikers. And less smoke. Uh, I don't know. There's a couple of smokes. <laughs> here and there. Uh, Shall we go into the dungeon? To go in? I would be. Right there. Maybe we're going in the dungeon. Find out. You can just ask how much of it is. I don't know. So we're here now on top of St. Michael's Cathedral. Up the uh, steeple. It's about 106 meters off the ground. Probably has the best views in all of Hamburg, except for that building over there. We decided to take the steps because there was a line for the elevator, thinking how bad could it be. It was a long walk, but again, worth it, as always. find out how the others are doing. Back here with Lars again. Lars, what do you think of the view? Great view. Uh, you can see all of Hamburg and one big spin here. Uh, you get up and down. Up here. It's pretty, you can see the whole city. It's a very pretty. 
Walking down or? Walking down, yeah. Just taking the elevator. Let's take the elevator. Uh, there's a bunch of kids. That's, that's the stairs, not the elevator. Yeah, the elevator's elevator over there. Right. Yeah. Elevator it is. Elevator it is. Go for it. Toll for the Ross. No, it's toll is from. How you feeling? It feels great. The wind is like a nice air conditioning after the climb. Air's our pits out there. That means it's lunchtime. <laughs> St. Michael's Church. Um, there's a, a crypt down here in the basement. Um, if you look around over here, you can see uh, Philip Emanuel Bach, which is the son of Johann Sebastian Bach, the famous composer. His son was also a musical director and was famous uh, in Germany. Looks like every one of these floor tiles we stand on is a different grave. They're not there anymore, though. They've been moved? Huh? They've been moved? I think so. Yeah. During the war? Yeah. Uh, no, there was water damage. Something to do with uh, it. Most of the, there are no more coffins in here, they said. Yeah. 61. What do you guys think? What have you learned about this place? It's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Over there they have pictures of how this place looked like during the World War II. And they rebuilt it after that. It looks like it is today, but um, it withstood all the war. So that's pretty cool. What else about you? Learned anything interesting? I think I saw a ghost over there. That's just Lars. So we're back here in the uh, crypt of St. Michael's and uh, upon further investigation we have found that, as you can see, the floor is covered with names uh, of people that died um, between the late 18th century and early 19th century. Um, most of these graves here contain hundreds of bodies. Um, four meters deep these graves actually go and uh, tombs, tombs, but the uh, coffins were laid horizontally and many of these have three to five coffins through the bottom um, of the four meters that they're buried. Um, if you read the pamphlet, they say that 61 of the 268 that they had found um, were examined and well preserved. So they were able to see the, um, the work of the coffins made during the Baroque style period. Um, you get a good idea of how people buried um, their dead back then, basically how they lived and a lot of the graves here are of nobility, but also of guilds and maybe people that did not have you know, as much money as people originally thought. So we come to you now, um, just leaving one of the holier parts of the city to find ourselves in the most sinful. We're on Reaper Bond Street, home of strip clubs, casinos, bars, porn stores, and 
prostitutes. And Ross here has gratefully offered, or you know, nicely offered to sell his body to raise more money for the trip. So we're hoping he'll do well. He's gonna post up on that corner there. That's the idea. Uh, what are we gonna do in the meantime? Very nice. How much? <laughs> British soccer? Yeah. People getting rowdy behind us. Let's go fight them. <laughs> the subway now. Unfortunately, we learned that most of the prostitutes don't come out until 8 o'clock, so there wasn't really a lot of business for Ross. And also we found out, although prostitution may be legal here, pimping is not. And we were told by the police that us three pimping out this one, that was illegal, so we had to leave. So now we're getting ready. Head back to Ikea. Two minutes to head back to Ikea. Get some extra blankets and food. We'll Mostly try, blankets. We'll try pimping them out for a little. Mostly blankets. We need blankets. <laughs> Especially you. <laughs> <laughs> We're here now with Lars Taken, uh, Lars Tanglin, taking his refresher course on manual driving. He learned on a manual shift. It's been a while. In a few years. We'll see how it goes. He's doing a good job. Right. Very exciting! <laughs> My bad. That man jumped out of nowhere. All <laughs> <laughs> the stuff he just went around. flying. Very good at handling a stick. Hello, and welcome back to the Berlin Goom, which is now going to Berlin. Been stuck in traffic for a little while, but we're cruising along the Autobahn, giving it as much as this little 90 horsepower diesel engine can give. <laughs> it's not much. So, we're getting past a lot. <laughs> 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 Ross, how we doing? Oh, we're doing pretty well. We're doing pretty well. You know, eating bugs like nothing else in our windshield is getting quite disgusting. Yeah, it's pretty hard to clean off. Um, the Bilingo has a lot of heart, but not a lot of power. And it makes things a little tricky. <laughs> <laughs> Lars, how you doing? All right, valuable input. Good. Adds up to the whole trip. <laughs> Can't wait until we get to Berlin and shower, lay down on our new, brand new IKEA mats that me and Norris just bought at IKEA. And the blankets. Hopefully, it's cold enough that we get to use them again. Okay. Alright, I guess we'll see you in Berlin. See you in Berlin. Tschüss. Hello. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> we, um, we're in our campground now. We're away from our tent. We set our tent up and we decided to go out and get food. We found out, yeah, behind across, enemy lines. We crossed the Berlin There are crowds, crowds everywhere. Um, <laughs> so we, no, 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 no. <laughs> we, um, we decided to get some food. We're, we were gonna go to McDonald's, but Ross was stubborn. So we decided oh, to uh, <laughs> we decided to go to the little barbecue place at the campground, the beer garden. So we we ordered some food and had a few or had a drink, and um, we ran into our first couple of language problems ordering food. They didn't speak any English, and they didn't like Tomas's German. <laughs> they didn't agree with it. So <laughs> I, I would say I would say we weren't we weren't well liked. Mention to the right. Uh, I don't Hitler's mansions to the right here. 
Hitler. We're, we're calling him Hitler now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, no, it's the beer Nazi. He's the beer Nazi. <laughs> the beer Nazi. So we were served by the beer Nazi. He asked in German, according to Tomas, what the hell was wrong with us. Um, Ross did try to steal someone else's beer, thinking oh, it was his. Really is it straight? And, uh, Where is it? Yeah, yeah, straight, straight, straight. straight, straight, straight. Um, he put it on the counter. He put it on the counter. Well, yeah, except the guy, so the guy who helped translate for us um, had ordered two beers before us and was getting them served, and Ross kept trying to take them. <laughs> no one was saying anything. <laughs> we were laughing at him, not saying yeah, anything, because we knew what was going on. Beer Nazi. Yeah, so, so the beer Nazi was very angry. Um, we're probably not going to eat there again. We're going to McDonald's now because we wanted more food. And their Wi-Fi. And their Wi-Fi. You get the bratwurst without a, a bun. I mean, that's, I don't know if that's a, is it's that a, a German thing. thing? It's a thing. It's a thing? It's okay, well, I don't like it. So I was going to the beer nuts. It's a thing, but <laughs> anyway, um, pretty sure you're supposed to say something else about the beer Nazi. What? <laughs> what was it? I don't know. That's okay. Well, uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, we'll check uh, in sorry. later. Uh,